Hi everyone, we're back with organ transplantation and I've picked the renal failure, heart failure and liver failure but my focus today is going to be liver failure because the patient in liver failure is a lot sicker than the one who gets a kidney or the one who gets a heart. The clinical setting step by step chapter 10 of dearnurses.net is packed with helpful information on these topics. So here we have the renal patient, he's having a workup done and remember there is a point when the kidneys are no longer able to perform their normal function. Of course it's a process because the damaged kidneys and there are many reasons that the kidneys can become damaged. I'm not going to be able to go into all of them right now. But once the kidneys become damaged they're no longer able to do their proper function. Let's take a look at what might develop in either of the three pa categories of patients, Anasaka. Sounds like a nice name, but it really isn't. It really means generalized edema. And what these patients are, they are literally swollen hands, feet, their whole bodies are swollen, they're miserable. They turn over and their impression is left everywhere. If you, you put your finger, as you can see there, you press your finger into the skin, it leaves a depression. And they are miserable because they are so swollen. Skin breakdown becomes very easy, serous fluids and fluid e oozes, and diuretics are usually given to get rid of the excess fluid. Uh, patients who are in liver failure might wind up on dialysis as well as those who are in kidney failure. Very often when the liver fails, the kidney fails with it too. So patients who get a liver transplant very often wind up having a kidney transplant as well. It's very complicated. Some of the signs you might see in a patient in liver failure is um, what is called asteresis and this is uh, demonstrated usually in the second stage of liver failure. It's called asteresis or liver flap. Dorsiflexion at the wrist result in tremor like the wings of a bird in flight and these patients may progress to what is called hepatic encephalopathy when the brain can no, uh, the liver is so damaged that ammonia goes to the brain and they become very lethargic, mental confusion, ultimately they become comatose. They might even require intracranial pressure monitoring. Now I gave you a rundown of the biliary tract. The liver is divided into four lobes, very important organ. It's a very, very important organ with a lot of special work to do. So take the time to go to dearnurses.net, the clinical setting, step-by-step, -step, chapter 10. It's packed with helpful information. Now let's just do an overview of the patient who has received a liver transplant. Mr. H has just received one and he's in the ICU. Lots of work for the nurses. Sometimes three nurses are taking care of this one patient when they first arrive in the ICU. We have to look at some of the what our care plan would look like. These patients may be at risk for rejection of the organ, infection at the surgical site, post-operative pneumonia and skin breakdown, um, bleeding. This is not uncommon because the liver is a vascular organ and it also has a lot of things in eventual coagulations. Um, then we have immunosuppressant drugs which are used, drugs like Salcept and Imuran and Prograf and steroids and these have to be taken for the rest of their lives so these patients have to be educated not just to take these drugs when they feel like when they go home they must continue the process. I hope you have enjoyed learning. Have a nice day.